Guys, I don't know if there is any other four-door, four-wheel drive, full body on frame vehicle that's more capable, reliable, affordable, and customizable than the Jeep Wrangler. Whoa, 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 Josh. What about the good old classic Toyota 4Runner? Well, guess there's only one way to find out. You ready? Let's, Let's go. go. There may not be a bigger rivalry than the Toyota 4Runner and the Jeep Wrangler, especially since 2007 when the Wrangler came out with the four-door models. Well, today, the other Josh and I, we're going to take these things out here at Tigerton Off-Road Park in Tigerton, Wisconsin, and we're going to put these two to the test. And we're going to show you guys exactly how well they do. You guys ready to go check these things out? Let's go. All right, guys, so while Josh follows us in the 4Runner, we're gonna take Zach's Jeep. Now this is a 2018 Jeep Wrangler JLU. We already have it in four low. We already have the sway bar disconnected, which is a nice feature with the Jeep is we can disconnect the sway bar real easily. Actually, Zach's got some JKS quick disconnects on here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the Jeep. We're gonna put it through its paces. We're gonna go through some rocks, some mud, some different obstacles that are out here in Tigerton. And we're gonna get a good feel for the Jeep Wrangler and see how it does. And then we're gonna take the 4Runner, the other Josh, he's gonna come with the 4Runner and he's gonna do the same thing. And we're gonna follow step by step the same exact path that we're taking right now, get the feel for the 4Runner. And at the end of each obstacle, we're basically just gonna give them different points, uh, performance points per se, and just see how well they do. And at the end of the day, we're gonna add up those points and see which one wins. So we've come up to our first obstacle. It's a pretty easy obstacle. There's a couple of big kind of flat rocks that are at the bottom of this sort of rock pile. Obviously the Jeep is basically just walking through it with no problem. So Zach's Jeep has 35 inch tires with a four inch lift, whereas Keaton's 2024 runner has their 285 70 on 17. So four runner does have just a little bit smaller of a tire, but still rather capable. Actually, we're gonna find out. So now we're up to our second obstacle Whoa. here. Keaton just hit the dash. <laughs> we're coming up over this kind of rock pile here, and then we're gonna get into some mud which does have some rocks on the bottom of it uh, I don't foresee any sort of issues getting through here just walking right through it so yeah not even not even an issue for the Jeep Wrangler now we did want to compare a four-door Jeep Wrangler Sport non Rubicon edition with a 4Runner um, non-TRD, non-TRD Pro version to get a more more of a, a closer representation of mid-level, trim-leveled base vehicles uh, that don't have all the extra electronic lockers in them um, and really none of those additional traction technology. So we're just running open diffs. The only advantage with Zach's Jeep is a little bit bigger tire and the uh, sway bar is disconnected so but it'll be pretty cool to watch pretty cool to see all right well now that jeep and josh is out of our way we can get down to the business with keaton's forerunner and really show the jeep guys how this is done now i have it in four low and we do have the active track on which limits the speed of the engine it controls the transmission it controls the analog brakes and basically all of the electronic like stability control systems or traction control systems on here on either vehicle i know jeep and josh didn't air down the tires were not aired down on keaton's vehicle and i know that jeep and josh said that we're gonna have a little bit of a disadvantage because of our ground clearance i don't think so but we're gonna walk this forerunner right through all of these obstacles the same if not better than that jeep now this is that first obstacle that they went through 
Look at that. We didn't even stop. <laughs> Spoke too soon. <laughs> Piece of cake. There's nothing to it. This is like a walk in the park. Plus with this independent front suspension, smooth as a baby's bottom. Now I'm sure the Jeep guys would call this an obstacle. Not if you're in a 4Runner. This is more like a speed bump. Can't even tell we went through an obstacle. That was so smooth. That was simple, easy, didn't spin a tire Yeah, We hit a little bit on the skid plate, but hey, that's what they're there for. All right, guys, now we have this pretty steep decline, which is probably pretty hard to catch on the camera because it's always two-dimensional compared to what it looks like in real life. And this 4Runner should be able to tackle this no problem. The back end definitely feels light. We got to come down slow because we don't want to rest the 4Runner on top of this rock. I know we'll, we'll scrape it a little bit, which I think we just did. Yeah, a little scrapage again. But hey, no big deal, we're in a four runner. It's, you can't stop these things. All right, so now we gotta come back up this hill. And again, we're just gonna walk it up. <clears throat> now remember, the four runner has 265, or 285 70s, which is right around a 33 inch tire or so. And not aired down. We got independent front suspension, solid live axle in the rear. No lockers, but we do have the action active track on. And what do we do? Literally just crawled right up that little incline there. Now we gotta make a hard right, and we're gonna come up this pretty steep boulder. And I don't have any doubts that the four runners gonna have any issues making. Look at that. No problem. It's a forerunner. What do you expect? Easy peasy. All right, guys, well, before we get into how they did off-roading, a couple other things I wanted to touch base on is obviously the Jeep and the 4Runner are competitive in that overlanding world, but which one is actually better? The Jeep has a little less cargo space, but it's still a very capable vehicle. However, you're gonna lose some of that space when you're looking to put in a fridge, or even if you're looking to sleep in the back of your Jeep, there's not as much space. So either have to go with some, maybe a, a rooftop tent, or maybe pull a trailer, or a camper or something like that to get that additional space for camping whereas yeah whereas well no said guys definitely a lot more room in here and maybe it's not a lot more room but there is more room to set this up set the forerunner up like your little turtle almost you got a little shell around you you got your bed in here Keaton's got this set up with some storage systems underneath here a refrigerator little extra space to have your creature comforts home away from home. Yeah, but it, hold on. The Jeep obviously did much better off-road. I mean, we have the solid axles. We have the 35-inch tires. We have the quick disconnects on here. This thing was a beast when you take it off-road and it goes through all of those different obstacles that we went through today with ease. Obviously, this went off-roading with ease today. It made it through all the different obstacles, no problems at all. And that's a Jeep for you. In fact, I think the saying goes, if you want to go on an off-road venture, take a Jeep. If you want to make it back, well, take the Jeep. I don't, know. I, don't, I don't know. If I'm the type of guy that wants to go on an off-road adventure, hit the rocks, hit the trails, do some crazy hill climbs and all different kinds of obstacles like that, I think I would lean towards the Jeep. It's obviously capable off-roading and if I wanted to go over landing, yeah, it's definitely capable for doing that too. So on a point system, I would give the Jeep 10 out of 10 points for off-roading and 8 out of 10 points for overlanding just because it has a little less cargo space. I don't know what 4Runner Josh is going to say, but 
let's find out. Yeah, yeah, but you forgot to mention a few things. First of all, how's that Jeep ride? Probably not as good as the 4Runner. This bad boy's got independent front suspension. You're gonna get a lot better handling and ride comfort on the road, and even on the trails as well. Sure, you might lose a little off-road capability. I mean a little. This thing still made it through all of those aggressive obstacles with ease. It was extremely impressive. The active track did exactly what it's designed to do. Kept the vehicle moving forward with ease. So, Forerunners, no slouch on the trails or on the road. Plus, you want to talk about reliability, something you forgot to talk about. Forerunner, Toyota, enough said. So then, what would I give the Forerunner for points? Well, off-road, yes, we lost a little bit of ground clearance because we don't have 35-inch tires, but still, I would give this a 9 out of 10 for off-roading. And on-road performance and cargo carrying capacity over landing, obviously a 10 out of 10, which means Forerunner wins. All right, all right, so let me get this straight. Right now, we're at 19 out of 20 with the 4Runner, but we're at 18 out of 20 with the Jeep. Well, my friend, you forgot one thing. We're gonna add three additional bonus points for the fact that the Jeep is a convertible, meaning you can take the roof off, you can take the doors off, a lot more modularity with the Jeep. So, so that means we're at 21 out of 20, meaning, well, simple guys, Jeep wins all day long. But what we really wanna know is what you guys think. Would you rather have a four-door Jeep would you rather have the Rubicon version, two-door version? Which model of Jeep would you rather have for off-roading and overlanding or one or the other? Which one do you guys think is best there? Or on the other side of the spectrum, would you rather have the 4Runner? Independent suspension, great on the road, reliability, still plenty of room to set up your overlanding equipment with, and not to mention the 4Runner has 5,000 pounds towing capacity compared to the 3,500 pounds of the Jeep. So a lot of different variances there, but let us know in the comments below. Other than that guys, we appreciate all of you for watching and all of your support. I'm Josh from Trail Built and we'll see you guys out on the trails.